Right, good day, viewers. I scored this 60 inch LCD TV on the side of the road. It's a Sony Bravia. It's been, uh, screen's been kicked in. I was surprised to find that it's all Sony branded components in there. Sony were the ones that outsourced all of their manufacturing to China. But it's all uh, Sony branded. I'll just quickly plug the power back in. Everything does seem to work. I hear the boot up sound and everything on it. Made in June 2015. It's not even that, not even that old. This must be the Wi Fi device. Han High Precision Industries made in China. 5 gigahertz indoor use only, that's the Wi-Fi module. And it even has a uh, little uh, tiny SMA connectors for an antenna. Cool, you can put Wi-Fi aerial on this thing. That's really cool. Tusa. I've also found it quite interesting, it's like a PCR slot, similar to some using some laptops to look similar. This tuner and uh, AV input module is actually uh, interchangeable with something else. That's kind of cool, and it's separate from the actual TV module. So you can change this tuner module, maybe you can upgrade it for ultra high definition or something. Which is kind of cool. It's a Sony branded. This is a set top box that's inbuilt into the TVs they used to talk about when these TVs are coming out. This is a processor, the CPU, Sony X Reality Pro. All Sony branded. Amazing. Silicon image, I must put the RAM, more RAM here. This is the uh, more for the picture, networking stuff. This Yamaha chip is the actual audio amplifier for the speakers. They're uh, made in Vietnam, quite nice little speakers. Look at that, the voice call, it's a cute, very cute little speaker. They all sound pretty nice like that, I might keep those, definitely keep those. At least they put some quality into the various speakers in these TVs, because the majority of the cheaper ones sound like ass. Made in China by Sony, Shanghai China Sony. They're all bloody, huh? PET, the future seat, prism sheet, PET, reflective sheet, PET. The uh, backlight, it'd be interesting to use off this. I could hang it up on the roof, have a little LCD TV backlight as a, um, as a roof, a normal uh, light, LED light. Main filter caps, a Rubicon, 105 degrees Celsius, 570 volt, 120 microfarad. Specialty one, very nice. Certain old vintage radio applications that would be useful. Nice flat profile transformer. Everything's nice and flat. Quality stuff. Quality stuff. 230 watt power supply. Quickly get a power cord and we'll show you what it does. Doesn't look too nice with a smashed up screen. At least makes a boot up sound, it seems to work. Well, the light's on, stand by. The Sony logo has been smashed out. Oh, look at all that up. I can't see much on that screen. Can't see much at all. Let's try and change the menus and see what the TV does sound wise. Ooh. I'm trying to select something. Yeah. <laughs> the smart TV part works, but I can't see what's on the screen. There's no monitor out function, so I can't use it to go out and see as a monitor out. CRT one certain ones are the monitor out function. It's completely buggered. Here's the liquid crystals, liquid crystal. Yeah, not really a fan of these modern TVs. I'd say the LCD would have been playing up to begin with, I think. That's why they threw it on the side of the road. I just smashed the Sony logo out of it, out of frustration. This is like a $5,000 bloody TV almost, depending on where you buy it from. Um, I did something really stupid. This is a fucking dick move. 
It cost me my Powertrain VFD and blew its IGBTs. I'm not happy. I'm pissed off. I uh, sealed up the electric motor really good. The uh, one I scored today and cleaned it all up and uh, sealed it up. Oh, yeah. It's perfectly sealed. There's a bit of moisture in here, so I blew it all out. Oh, yeah, she's all good. Look pretty dry in there after I blew it all out. Anyway, I tested it. And fucking bang! Big flash of earth inside here. has a big flash in a terminal box here. I had it all open. Scared that crap out of me. It's a big bang. And the VFD blew its uh, IGBTs. And now this thing's just shorted to earth. I'm doing this, this as a technique, I just figured out, I just worked, uh, thought of this now. What I'm doing is I'm shortening this out across the battery. I want to feel where it gets hot. It worked on this one. I uh, did this technique, short between the warnings and earth on a high current source, in this case a truck battery. And I felt here was getting hot, so I just marked it. That's where the actual short has gone earth, it's right here. That's where the heat is, so... That's where it got hot, that's where the short to earth is. I can't for the life of me figure out how it shorted to earth. I can't see a flash or a carbon track or a breach in the windings or a breach in the plastic insulation. I don't know. But she's bloody gone to earth now. Um, that was a stupid mistake. I won't be doing that again. Yep, she's gone to earth. I don't think that would be possible. But yeah, there's obviously enough of a flash of there and the carbon in that arc and bang. There was some of it there that's carbon. And she's gone to earth, so uh, she's um, stuffed. I'll have to find out exactly where I can try and uh, put some varnish or something in there to get that to stop. But I don't know how I'm going to fix that. It's stuffed. First time that's happened to me. Disconnect that. You do got to be careful with inductive kick kickback when you do this because it hurts. Well, this and there, the warnings are small, so the warnings are hot, but not the actual where it's shorted to earth, it's hot. I put it across the welder, but that didn't do nothing. So this must be a bigger short to earth, but it's actually a tiniest bit of current that's been passed. It's more so here, it's just slightly warm here. So I'll say here is where it's shorted to earth. So if I get a marker, and mark that bit little area there, that general area. The red marker. It's a pretty cool technique actually. You just feel where it gets hot, or if you have an IR infrared camera, even better. Just to pin pinpoint exactly where it failed, where the insulation actually failed. That's a shame. So, I um, mean, that bloody thing cost me my VFD. All because it was a bit of more excess moisture in there. So, if your motor has got moisture in it, yeah, don't run off a VFD. Big no no. It's quite an expensive mistake. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I've got. Four of them are looking intact, we're going to replace the whole six. Two of them have got cracks and blown open. I'll give you a little look here. I'll get a little uh, light out. We'll see what they've got written on them. Might be able to order some. k 2 t 60 That's a whole lot of them are. Hopefully nothing else went pop, because I just unplugged it straight away as soon as I heard the bang. Like I just ripped the plug out of the socket. K20 T60, these are RGBTs, so there's bits of solder or something there, which off that little leg there, blew off there. Uh, yeah, she's gone, bang. This little earthing leg, because that's what went to earth, the uh, 
motor back to the left and it went through here. Killed that one. Toyota Road 260, so order six of those and we'll go from there. Hopefully I haven't killed anything else in this drive. Bugger. Bugger. K2 OT60, K20 T60, they're RGBTs and I think they're 60 amp rated. So I have to order some of those and fix that drive up. Hopefully nothing else went bang in that drive. But um, we've lost the motor, but who cares? It didn't cost me anything. Free from a friggin' scrap bin. What a dick move, so. Word of warning, if you want to wash an electric motor, make sure it's completely dried out before you put your good VFD in it to test it. There's no RCD in this shit either. I was cautious, so you know, I wasn't in any, uh, any danger, but just for those of you who don't know, just be bloody careful. Always have an RCD in a circuit with someone you're testing something, especially if you've been washing something and you power it up and, you, and, you don't, and you're pretty sure it's dry, but there could be moisture in it. Always have it on an RCD circuit. So RCDs save lives. This uh, is now gone to earth. But in there somewhere we'll have a flash and carbon track from the winding to earth. I just cannot physically see it. But she's passing enough current to warm up across those battery terminals. Ah oh well, maybe you'll have some fun with it later on, we'll see what happens. Anyway, that'd be enough for now. Thanks for watching.